it's unique. Um, it's um, never been dumbed down uh, in modern times at all. It has an extremely uh, distinguished list of winners. It means a very, very great deal to me to be awarded this prize. Well, it's the first of all the book prizes. Found it long before any of the others, and also it's the most elegant. It's given for writers, for writing, which is a very private thing that you do, and a very private thing you do when you read it. The James Tate Black Prize is our literary awards presented by the University of Edinburgh's School of Literatures, Languages and Cultures, the oldest centre for the study of English literature in the world. The prize was set up in The Last Will and Testament of Janet Coates Black. She set up the prize to commemorate the life of her husband, James Tate Black, who had predeceased her by about seven years. She died in 1911. She described him as a man who was very interested in the educative and elevating powers of literature. She set up prizes in fiction and biography to commemorate that. First awarded in 1919, Hugh Walpole won the Fiction Prize, a distinguished novelist in those days. The prize had always been in the gift of the professor of English literature. In those days there was apparently only one. Since then the process of judging has become a little more complicated. There's a lot more publishing, there are a lot more professors nowadays. But essentially it's remained uh, retained by the university. The winners join a distinguished gallery of past winners which includes many celebrated literary figures. I think the fiction list, by any measure, is a most remarkable list, a sort of who's who really, of fiction writers in the 20th century. Writers that anybody with even a smattering of interest in English literature over that period would recognise. D.H. Lawrence, D.M. Forster, Arnold Bennett, Muriel Spark, uh, Evelyn Waugh, Elizabeth Bowen. So really a kind of a great list, a great back catalogue of, of winners of the prize. A Best of the Best award for the prize in 2012 was won by Angela Carter for her 1984 novel, Nights at the Circus. The one-off award was made to celebrate the 250th anniversary of English literature study at the university. In recent years, you know, we've continued that tradition, really, so there are distinguished names that anybody, I think, who's interested in fiction would recognise, Cormac McCarthy, Jim Crace is a, a recent winner, um, but also younger writers, writers who are um, em emerging talents. Zadie Smith won uh, for White Teeth very early on in her career, um, as did David Peace, a very distinguished writer. Anybody who's familiar with life writing over the last hundred years will notice in each decade the foremost writers in that field. Um, to pick out just one name from the early years of the prize, Lytton Stretch is a, a writer who, say anybody who knows anything about biographical writing, will immediately recognise as a, as, a, as a major writer, an innovative writer, but also a radical choice as well. In the 1920s, it was by no means a safe choice. His biography of Queen Victoria wanted to uh, look at the their, his grandparents, that generation's grandparents, and put them under the microscope. So he, I think, is a kind of representative of, of those early years of the prize. A unique aspect of the prizes is that they are judged entirely by university English professors and postgraduate literature students. Each year, more than 400 books are read by academics and students who make nominations for the shortlist. I think it's a positive that we have postgraduate readers because it preserves the integrity of the book judging process. Um, a lot of the bigger commercial book prizes have a vested interest, whether from a publisher, a celebrity, a sponsor, whoever, in getting certain nominations up there or certain authors to win the prizes. Um, we've had none of that, you know, since the inception of the James Tate Black Prize. It's always been postgraduate readers. It's been people who have been trained to read literature, evaluate literature, who love doing that. Um, and as past winners have shown, they've spotted potential at a very early stage of some authors' careers. Whatever category you get, whether it's fiction or biography, it tends to make you read outside of your subject area. You have to open up your horizon slightly. And I've read everything from Bismarck to Eleanor Marx and everything in between, and it just it gives you a more rounded perspective of what it is to be a student of literature again. The winners of the prizes are announced at the Edinburgh International Book Festival in the heart of the first UNESCO World City of Literature. 
think the James Tate Prize is part of Edinburgh's literary story. It's, it's right that such a prestigious prize, the UK's oldest literary prize, should be in a UNESCO city of literature, which really values literature, books, words, ideas, reading. With the prize's 100th anniversary coming up, the university will mark the extraordinary legacy of the prize, which celebrates reading and the love of books. Early winners include Lytton Strachey, about whom I wrote a biography, uh, and also my wife, Margaret Drabble, on the fiction side, won it in 1967 for Jerusalem Gold in her novel. So I'm um, in good company. It's got a huge, serious international reputation, and winning it is just what every biographer aspires to. But this is exceptionally benign, because it, it's given for writers for writing, which is a very private thing that you do and a very private thing you do when you read it. And there's that quality that that's been met, the privacy. It's a sort of award to recognise the quality of that privacy. And that is wonderful and that is rare and I don't think there's another prize like it. This is a prize which has always been about reading and very high standards of literature. And you see the name of the winner come out every year and usually you read the book because you know somebody with judgment has chosen it. I think uh, having it judged by the, the postgraduate students and, and, and the, the faculty makes it different. The thing about the James Tate Black Prize is that the standard's so high. Whatever the reason, your shortlists are astounding and the record of previous winners is simply um, the chapters of English literature, it's amazing. You know, it never occurred to me I could, I could join that amazing company. It's the nicest possible company to be in.